we will continue where we left off last time and uh, discuss the notion of operators in quantum mechanics. We'll continue discussing the notion of operators in quantum mechanics. So last time we uh, introduced that operators are basically objects that in the linear vector space that act on certain vectors. So operators act on vectors in the vector space. So let's call some vector alpha and they give you a new vector that lives in the same vector space alpha prime, okay? So operators basically uh, do something to the vectors, to change the vectors, all right? So operators are very important in quantum mechanics because as I told you last time, simply uh, talking about vectors in a linear vector space uh, might be of mathematical significance, but in physics, we want to study how vectors change as the system evolves in time, right? So typically speaking, you apply a force on an electron and you want to see how the electron responds to the force. So in quantum mechanics, as we will discuss shortly, uh, the state of the electron is a vector in a linear vector space, right? So the question of how does the electron move when you apply this force on the electron is tantamount to asking how does this vector that represents the electron change as you apply the force, okay? So we want to understand how vectors evolve in time. We want to understand the dynamical pro properties of these vectors that represent physical systems. So it is very important for us to understand how vectors change with time, change with respect to position, or just change under some external stimulus, okay? And the objects that affect these transformations are called operators. Operators act on vectors to give you new vectors that also lie in the same vector space. So they should not change they should not give you something that is beyond the vector space, okay? Otherwise, it's not a valid operator. Now, in general, this alpha, alpha prime is different from alpha, but there is actually a very special class of vectors that operators have such that a vector K acts on, sorry, an operator K acts on a vector phi and gives you something times the vector itself. Okay. So this is actually a very special kind of vector such that the operator acting on the vector gives you some multiple of the same vector. It doesn't give you a new vector. Well, lambda times phi is typically a new vector. It's a different vector from phi, but the new vector can be represented as a multiple of the old vector. Okay. And there could be a bunch of such vectors. So if there's a bunch of such vectors corresponding to a bunch of such values lambda, then we can indicate them with some kind of an index called n, okay? And as you probably well know, this is a very famous equation called the eigenvalue equation, okay? And the vectors phi n that obey this property are called the eigenvectors of k, and the uh, multiples lambda n are called the eigen values corresponding to the eigenvector phi n, okay? This, this is very familiar to you from the uh, theory of the uh, matrices. For example, if you have a matrix, right? So let us say some A1, A2, B1, B2, and some vector V1, V2 equals some, some number, let us say three plus I times V1, V2. This is an example in the corresponding matrix space. Okay, so we will stick with the Dirac bracket notation in this lecture, but it's useful to think of uh, the matrices because uh, it, it gives you a very solid way of understanding what's going on. All right. So this is the eigenvalue equation and uh, translated in the space of matrices, you know how to for example, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, there is also a tutorial problem that is due tomorrow that deals with this. Typically, you solve what is called the characteristic equation. Okay, so basically, if you have A lambda equals A times lambda as the, uh, or rather, A times V equals some um, A times V as the, um, uh, eigenvalue equation, 
let's call this lambda because it's more commonly employed. Then you start by solving for the lambdas by solving the, for the characteristic equation, which is determinant of A times lambda times the unit matrix is equal to zero. And solving this equation will give you lambda eigenvalues. Please zoom the screen. Is this better? So somebody asked me to zoom the screen. So hopefully this, this is better for you. Okay. Now solving for the eigenvalues, then you plug this back into the eigenvalue equation. For each lambda, you can get a corresponding eigenvector. I will not repeat this calculation here because it is done in almost every uh, high school or a BSc level, but we will also go through a tutorial problem tomorrow sort of to revise this concept. So we will uh, import the same concept in a more abstract notation. Uh, using the Dirac bracket uh, language that we have developed in, in the form of the equation that I've written. K operator acting on a ket phi n gives me lambda n times the phi n itself. Okay. Now the reason I'm introducing the notion of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is because this is of fundamental importance in quantum mechanics, particularly in the context of Hermitian operators. So remember that Hermitian operators that we discussed yesterday Hermitian operators have the uh, nice property that H equals H dagger or translated in the bracket space. So remember that the operator acts on the kit and the adjoint of the operator acts on the corresponding bra vectors. So if I calculate, for example, in the Hermitian operator, uh, let us write down the eigenvalue equation for a Hermitian operator. So H, which I will call the Hermitian operator, acting on phi n equals, um, let us say some A n phi n. Okay, this is the eigenvalue equation for a Hermitian operator. Okay, phi n are the eigenvectors, A n are the eigenvalues. Okay. There is two important properties that concern Hermitian operators and the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that I want to talk about briefly, because this will play a fundamental role in quantum mechanics, particularly in the uh, idea of measurement in quantum mechanics. The first rather very important point is that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real regardless of whether remember that the operator itself can have complex entries but as long as the operator is real uh, as hermitian its eigenvalues are guaranteed to be real how do i see that it's actually quite straightforward so let us take this equation that um, i have underlined here okay so the phi n's are the eigenvalue equation. Let us calculate the matrix element. Let us calculate this quantity, phi n, h, phi n. Okay, now what is this quantity? So remember that I invite you always to think of this as a matrix element, which is basically the bra phi n. You can think of this as a row vector. You can think of this as a column vector. And you can think of this as a matrix, okay? So if that aids you, otherwise you can be strict with this abstract uh, notation also. Now, how do you evaluate this quantity? Well, you evaluate this quantity by claiming that H acts on phi n and H acts on phi. So the Dirac bracket notation, I'll rewrite this actually because this is not very useful the way I've written it. H acting on the eigenkets A n equals A n acting on the eigenkets A n. This is more useful. Okay. All right. Now H acting on the eigenket phi n gives me A n times phi n. So this is equal to oops, phi n A n phi n. But A n is just a number. So I can pull it out of the kit and write this quantity as A n phi n phi n. Okay, so I hope everybody understands this manipulation. If there is any questions, uh, please stop me and ask, okay? So remember that you can always unmute yourself at any point and talk. If not, you can always type it in the chat also. 
But if H is an Hermitian operator, there is actually another way I can evaluate the same matrix element. Remember that if H is Hermitian, it doesn't matter if I act this H on the ket on the right hand side or if I act H dagger on the bra on the left hand side because H is the same as the action of H is the same as action of H dagger. So phi n H phi n can be written as also. So the way you interpret this usually is phi n times the ket H phi n, right? That is how we have calculated this guy. For example, we have acted H on the right and uh, used the eigenvalue equation and written this in a very simplified form. But if H is Hermitian, then I can write phi n H phi n with the H acting on the left also because H is the same as H dagger. So I can write this quantity as, excuse me, H phi n phi n, okay? If H is not Hermitian, I cannot write it in this form. But if H is Hermitian, H is H dagger and H dagger acting on the left can be written as the bra H times phi n. So if you're confused, go back to uh, our discussion last week where we talked about this, right? So remember that K dagger acting on the bra alpha, we have uh, introduced the notation where I, where I can write this as simply the bra K alpha. That is exactly what I'm doing here. Since H is equal to H dagger, H dagger acting on the bra phi n on the left can be written as the bra H phi n. But this is equal to H phi n is again A n phi n phi n. But remember that bra A n phi n bra A n phi n is equal to A n star bra phi n. Okay. So viewed this way, phi n h phi n is equal to A n star phi n phi n. Okay. Now I want you to look at equation number one and equation number two. Okay. They are both the same quantities. The first equation tells me that A n times the overlap of phi n phi n equals A n star overlap of phi n phi n. And this obviously implies that A n equals A n star. So if a, if a number is equal to the complex conjugate of the same number, it simply means the imaginary part of the number is zero. Okay, so this simply means that A n is a real quantity. So the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real quantities. Okay, so is there any question uh, in this manipulation that we have done in this uh, sort of a proof of uh, the realness, reality of the eigenvalue of uh, Hermitian operators? Any questions or any comments that you have? This is the first property of Hermitian operators that is very crucial in quantum mechanics. The second property of Hermitian operators that is very crucial in quantum mechanics is eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. What does this mean? This simply means that let us take two different eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let us say that the operator H has an eigenvalue uh, A n corresponding to the eigenket phi n, and it has an eigenvalue A m corresponding to the eigenket phi m, and n is not equal to m, okay? We'll give a solid uh, example of this as we move along, but let us say that, so, there is some two-by-two two matrix with two distinct eigenvalues. And this two-by-two two matrix, let us say, is a Hermitian matrix. Then the claim is that phi n and phi m are orthogonal to each other. In the bracket language, this simply means that phi n, phi m equal to zero. Okay, that is what orthogonality means in the Dirac bracket notation. How do you see that? To see this, 
start with this eigenvalue equation h pi n equals a n pi n okay and then multiply by the bra phi m on the left multiply by phi m okay now on the left we have the matrix element phi m h phi n and the, on the right we have a n phi n phi n okay now on the left again i can use the hermeticity of h to write h as h dagger and h dagger acts on the bra phi m so i can write this as h phi m phi n equals a n phi m phi n okay but h phi m is nothing but a m phi m because a phi m is also an eigen ket of the operator h so this can be written like this okay now again bra am phi m is equal to am star phi m but since we are dealing with hermitian operators and since am is a eigenvalue of the hermitian operator by the first property am is a real quantity so this is nothing but am phi m since am is real okay so am star is nothing but am so if you plug this in you actually find that on the left hand side of this equation i have am phi m phi n on the right hand side of this equation i have am phi m phi m which I can write as am minus am phi m phi m equal to zero. Okay, so this tells me that phi m phi n equal to zero if m is not equal to n. This is actually a wonderful property of Hermitian operators and Hermitian matrices because if the eigenvectors of a Hermitian matrix are automatically orthogonal to each other, now it's actually a trivial thing to actually normalize all the eigenvectors. So I can always manipulate the eigenvectors, normalize the eigenvectors such that the eigenvectors are normalized. Phi n phi n is equal to 1. And the property of hermeticity of the operator guarantees that phi m phi n is equal to 0. So I can combine these two equations and write that phi m phi n is delta m n, where phi m are the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator. So this is actually a remarkable property because now this simply means that since the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator satisfy this property, I can use the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator as a basis set, okay? In other words, the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator, which can be normalized and whose eigenvectors are automatically orthogonal to each other, can serve as a basis vector in the, Herbi in, in the linear vector space that we are talking about. So any vector in this linear vector space can be expressed as alpha equals sum over i some uh, qn phi n. So the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator can be used as a basis set. Okay, this is a basis set. The eigenvectors of a, of a Hermitian operator are thus complete. In other words, sum over n phi n phi n 
equal to the identity operator. Okay. Sometimes, so this is exactly what we discussed last time also, if I remember right, or maybe the lecture before. Yeah, this was lecture before. Sometimes this is also called the completeness relation. Okay. This tells you that the, eigen, the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator form a complete basis set. Okay. In other words, this is, this is telling you that the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator are complete as a basis set. So this is called the completeness relation. So there are two properties of the Hermitian operator that are very important in quantum mechanics. The first property is that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real quantities. The second property is that the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator can be used as a basis set. Okay, so I can write any other vector in the in that particular um, linear vector space as a linear combination of the eigenvectors of a Hermit of the particular Hermitian operator. Okay, so I'll move on to some a specific example, but before I do that, are there any questions about any of this? Any questions or any comments? Okay. Sir, last two terms uh, explain kato, sir. All right. Can you explain the last expression? Okay, so remember that we talked about this completeness in the context of uh, basis vectors. And recall that I had written down that if you have basis vectors EI, Okay, oh, this is actually conked off, so I'll stop sharing and share it. Okay. So if you have a set of basis vectors, and if, if, if the basis vectors satisfy the property that EI, EI equal to the identity operator, then it means that the set of basis vectors EI that you have are a complete set of basis vectors, okay? So what does this mean? So why is this equal to one? So let us try to act this on some vector alpha. So let us say that you have some vector alpha in this basis vector space that can be written as a linear combination of this uh, a i e i okay or let us use a different symbol a a j e j okay now what does this operator relation mean so act this operator as it will do by itself is meaningless so you have to act it on some vector to understand what it does so let us act it on this vector alpha which is a j e j now what is this? This is equal to sum over i and j, e i, e i, a j, e j. Okay. Now a j is just a number, so I can pull it out. E i, a j, e i, e j. Okay. And since this is an orthonormal set of basis vectors, e i, e j overlap is just the Kronecker delta delta i j. So in this double sum, one of the sums goes away because the only value of j for which this is non-zero is j equal to i or i, i equal to j. So I can write this as sum over j, a j, e j. But sum over j, a j, e j is nothing but the vector alpha. So we conclude that the combination e i, e i, the operator acting on alpha gives me the same vector alpha which means this guy has to be the identity operator okay now we can turn this argument around on its head and claim that any set of vectors that satisfy this relation this operator relation uh, that we have written down here 
EI, EI equal to one is a complete set of basis vectors, okay? So basically any set of vectors that satisfy this relation can be used as a basis set in that particular linear vector space. That is all I'm trying to say, okay? Neyati asks, why do we write H on the left-hand side of the bra phi n? Shouldn't be written on the right, right of the bra vector. So this is just a notation, Neyati, and I'm sorry this can be a little confusing. So this is what I mean. Suppose if you have an operator K, okay, that acts on some vector alpha, then K has an adjoint operator that acts on the corresponding bra vectors, right? So there is an alpha that acts sorry there's a k dagger that acts on alpha okay now there is a shorthand notation for this that i'm employing i'm simply calling this k alpha and there's a shorthand notation that i'm employing for this that i'm calling this bra k alpha that is all okay so this is just a notation so yes you're absolutely right the uh, bra vector acts on uh, the the adjoint operator acts on the bra vector on the left Okay, suppose if I have a Hermitian operator and I have something like phi m h phi n, I can view this in two different ways. Because h is Hermitian, this is the same as phi m h dagger phi n because h equals h dagger, right? Now, on the left hand side, I can think of h as acting on the phi n on the left. So I can write this as h phi n. And on the right hand side, I can think of the H dagger as acting on the bra phi m. So I can write this as H phi m phi m. Okay, so this is basically the trick that I've employed in uh, the two proofs that we just talked about. I hope that is clear. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So I will uh, put a line here, a line here. Okay, now we will continue with a simple example that uh, should hopefully help you understand these manipulations a little bit. So I will consider the example of a spin half system. Okay, so again, as I told you in the very beginning, even though I'm using this as a simple example, spin itself is a very difficult question to explain at this juncture. It's, a, it's an intrinsically quantum, me quantum mechanical notion, um, but it, uh, the, it, it, it's, spin half is a very convenient system because it's a two dimensional linear vector space and I can simply use it as a very uh, cute example. So if you have not seen this before, there are three operators, also called three Pauli matrices in this uh, spin half system. Uh, we roughly call this X component, Y component, and Z component, even though this is a bad notation. Uh, S1, S2, S3 would be a much better notation, but let us stick to it. So uh, Sx, Sy, and Sz. Okay, there is, let us say, three operators. Okay, you also know what the form of these operators is. Sx is given by, the, this is the first Pauli matrix, h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. Sy is the second Pauli matrix, h bar over 2, 0, minus i, i, 0. And Sz is h bar over 2, 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Okay, so we roughly say that Sx measures the x component of spin, Sy measures the y component of spin, and Sz measures the z component of spin. Even though they are, uh, even though the x, y, z have nothing to do with the spatial dimensions, okay? Spin is in a very, very different linear vector space rather than the spatial coordinates, okay? So this we will talk about when we talk about angular momentum in detail in the next semester. For now, I just want to use it as a linear vector space example. So what do I mean? So let us take the example of SZ because that is the one that is more commonly employed. Take ASC. Now, First, a quick check will tell you that all three Pauli matrices are Hermitian, okay? Sx dagger is Sx, Sy dagger is Sy, and Sz dagger is Sz. So all, so this 
and there is two different eigen values and two different eigen vectors for these operators now i can take any one of these three operators and i can write it and i can write down the eigen value equation for it okay and i will get two eigen values and two eigen vectors okay so let me take the example of sz and i will call the two eigen vectors and two eigen values as plus minus okay so sx acting on the eigen vector plus will give you h bar over 2 times plus and sz acting on the eigen vector minus will give you minus h bar over 2 minus these are the two eigen vectors and two eigen values we can easily uh, satisfy yourself that this is true okay in the row uh, row vector notation plus corresponds to 1 0 and minus corresponds to 0 1 this is also sometimes referred to as spin up and spin down and some books also employ this notation right plus minus as this but i will not do this because it's rather difficult to draw arrows that is all so i will do plus minus okay now we will move away from matrices and simply think of sc as an abstract operator that has been diagonalized and gives you two eigen vectors eigen vector plus corresponding to the eigen value plus h bar over 2 and eigen vector minus that corresponds to eigen value minus h bar over 2 now let us write down some of the operators and some of this uh, uh, bracket notation uh, operators that we have talked about so what is the completeness relation and how can i write sz in terms of the uh, Brass and gets plus and minus. Okay, just just to get some practice. Since S C is a Hermitian operator, this plus minus is a complete set of basis vectors. Right, this is a complete set of basis vectors. This means that plus plus. Equals minus minus equals one, and plus minus equals minus plus equal to zero. The first line tells you that the plus and the minus have been properly normalized, and the second line tells you that the plus and the minus are orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay. All right. So, what is the completeness relation? Completeness relation. Is sum over i, e i e i equal to the identity operator? So, what is the identity operator? Now, remember that this is a two-dimensional linear vector space. Why is this a two-dimensional linear vector space? Because you need two vectors to serve as the basis vectors of this linear vector space. So, this is a trivially two-dimensional linear vector space. Okay. so what is the completeness relation in this uh, two dimensional linear vector space what is this identity operator of this two dimensional linear vector space well let us just expand this there are two eigen vectors i equal to plus and i equal to minus 1 2 so the completeness relation in this is identity operator is equal to plus 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 minus minus okay so i can equally well write this as an operator relation but if you are highly skeptical that how does how do i see that this is actually equal to 1 so we can always try to understand the components of this operator in other words the matrix representation of this operator so first of all are there any questions that uh, the completeness relation in this space takes this particular form so this equation the com completeness relation for this two dimensional space means this okay there is two eigen vectors i'm simply adding them okay so what does this mean matrix form so how do we go from here to something that looks like a 2 by 2 matrix well remember that whenever i have an operator i can always write down the components of a uh, i can write it down as a matrix and the matrix components are basically the operator sandwiched between one eigen vector and the other eigen vectors in other words this in the two dimensional linear vector space uh, plus and minus this operator one half has components
matrix form has components plus sandwiched between the operator and plus on the le on the left and minus on the right minus on the left and plus on the right and minus on the left and minus on the right these are the four different components of this matrix right if i were to write this identity operator as a matrix then this is how i would write the matrix similarly i can write down okay let us actually evaluate this completely before we move on okay what is this what are the components well we know the form of one right we know how one looks like so this is my identity operator in this two dimensional linear vector space so let's work out the components of this matrix that represents this identity operator well you already know what the answer is the matrix has to be 1 0 0 1 but let us actually work it out laboriously so what is plus 1 plus I should sandwich plus on the left of this operator and plus on the right of this operator. So this is plus plus minus minus and the right I will sandwich plus. What is this? This is bra plus and this is kit plus. So I can write this as plus plus and this is this uh, plus acts on the right of this plus. So this is plus plus. That is the first term. The second term is this plus hitting this bra minus on the left. Sorry, get minus on the left. So this is plus minus. And the second term is this plus hitting the bra minus from the right. So this is the second term. These are the two different components. These are the two different um, terms in this particular one one component a plus plus component of this matrix are there any questions about this is it clear the manipulation so you are sandwiching the operator between a row vector and a column vector okay so you can think of the bra as a row vector so the bra plus is uh, multiplying the uh, row plus in the first term and the bra plus is multiplying the row plus in the from the right hand side in the second term the row vector plus is mul multiplying the column vector minus and the row vector minus is multiplying the column vector plus. But since these correspond to an orthonormal set of eigenvectors, the overlap plus minus and minus plus is equal to zero. So this term is zero. And the overlap plus plus is equal to one. So this term is just number let us push ahead and also calculate the second component minus. So this is the same operator sandwiched between the bra plus and the ket minus. So this is plus between plus 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 minus minus and minus on the left. So the first term is the bra plus hitting the ket plus so this is plus plus and the bra plus hitting the ket minus so this is plus minus the second term is the bra plus hitting the ket minus and the last one is the minus hitting the minus okay now what is this term equal to well, the overlap plus plus is one, minus minus is one, but plus minus and minus plus are both equal to zero. So this entire thing is equal to zero. Okay, similarly, you can go ahead and prove to yourself that minus one plus is equal to zero and minus one minus is equal to one. Okay, so the matrix form of the operator in this basis is basically one, zero, zero, one. This is obviously the identity operator in the two-dimensional linear vector space. Okay. So let us just roughly form different combinations of plus and minus and construct operators. Okay, let us construct operators. So I have at my disposal two eigenvectors. So I can construct another operator. This is actually equal to HZ, SZ as I will show you. 
and this operator is basically plus plus minus 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 okay this z component sz can be written as this particular operator if you don't believe me again work it out explicitly so work out again sz in this uh, two dimensional linear vector space and then matrix form as plus sz plus plus sz minus minus sz plus and minus sz minus and to work out what the matrix corresponding to this abstract operator sz is simply work out all the different components of it so let us work out the one one component plus plus component plus sz plus is basically h bar over two plus sandwiched between this guy excuse me okay so this is h bar over 2 the first term is plus 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 and the second term is plus minus minus plus okay again this term is equal to 0 so this term the 1 1 component is simply equal to h bar over 2 okay you can keep evaluating this all the different components and you can prove to yourself that sz in this linear vector space can be written as the matrix h bar over 2 1 0 0 minus 1 which is what we began with anyway okay right here now you can do the exact same thing for sx and sy but instead of uh, forming other combinations let us actually form uh, this particular combination of operators instead of just multiplying always the plus and the plus or the minus and the minus let us suppose suppose if we do something like h s plus equal to let us say plus and a minus this is also an operator because this is neither a number nor a row vector this is actually a matrix with four different components again i can work out what the components are so this is actually a homework for you. You should work out, and I can also write down S minus, which is minus plus, okay? So homework, work out the matrix representation of S plus and S minus, okay? So how did you write SZ as an operator? Uh, I don't understand the question. Oh, so the question is, how did I know that this was this particular, uh, this was this particular form, right? So how did I know this, that this was, well, this is basically a combination of uh, guesswork and uh, the fact that I already know what the matrix representation of that operator is. But suppose if I can write down, so that's why I'm trying to explain this. I can write down any combination of, or I can write down any operator in this vector space. Suppose if I have, see, I have two vectors, plus and minus, and I can form all different kinds of combinations that can serve as operators, right? So I can form the combination plus, 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 minus, minus. I can form the combination plus, plus, minus, 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 right? I can also form the combination plus minus plus minus plus and I can also form the combination plus minus 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 sorry minus plus right all these different combinations I can follow so I have told you that this particular combination corresponds to the identity operator because I can work out the components and identify that this is the identity operator this particular combination corresponds to SZ, okay? Now, obviously, this combination and this combination should correspond to something else, but instead of working out this, these two combinations, I'm working out the combination plus, minus, and minus, plus, because they go into these operators, right? Plus, minus, and minus, plus. So I want to uh, tell you the difference between the operator SZ and the operator S plus and S minus. So you can write down all possible combinations and work out the different operators in the linear vector space. In fact, you can actually work out 
what is the uh, uh, bracket combination that corresponds to Sx and Sy? So given these two lines, how would you figure it out? Okay. The point is, S plus and S minus are not Hermitian operators, while Sz is. How do I see that? Looking at um, the abstract bracket notation instead of the matrix. Well, let us look at Sz first. Sz corresponds to the combination plus plus and minus minus, right? These are the two operators that go into the definition of Sz. So let us work out the Hermitian conjugate of both these schemes. What is the Hermitian conjugate of plus plus? As you know, for two matrices, for example, uh, okay, so I, this is equal to the dagger of this times the dagger of the second one times the dagger of the first one, because this can be written as a multiplication of two matrices, a row vector and a column vector, sorry, a column vector and a row vector. So this is equal to plus dagger times plus dagger. This, you can work out that this is trivially equal to plus plus, okay, because plus dagger corresponds to the corresponding row vector, okay. Then on changing the sign, would they still be Hermitian? Yes, because each term is individually Hermitian. So I'll, I'll talk, <coughs> I'll convince you this is true. Okay, so let us erase this part and write down S properly. So S is H bar over two times this minus this. So SC dagger would be, now this is just a number, plus plus dagger minus 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 dagger. Okay, and this is equal to, plus plus dagger is the same as plus plus, minus 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 dagger is the same as minus minus. And this is nothing but the operator that you started with. Okay. So if each term is individually Hermitian, the addition of these terms is also Hermitian. Similarly, we can also prove that the identity operator is trivially Hermitian because it is plus plus and minus minus. It only depends on the combination plus plus and minus minus. But if something depends on the combination plus minus, it is not immediately obvious that it is Hermitian, okay? So if I look at the operator, let us say S plus plus minus, this is not Hermitian because S plus dagger is H bar over two. The Hermitian conjugate of this is this and the Hermitian conjugate of this is this, right? So how do I know that? So I'll write it out explicitly. This is plus minus dagger. This is equal to H bar minus dagger plus dagger. This is equal to H bar over two the dagger of the uh, row vector minus is the column vector minus and the dagger of the column vector plus is the row vector plus and this is not equal to S plus. Okay, so S plus is not Hermitian. In fact, S plus dagger is equal to S minus. Okay, so if something depends on plus minus, it is not obvious that it is Hermitian, but I can construct a Hermitian operator out of it. Const for example, look at H plus, sorry, H bar over two times plus minus, plus minus plus. Okay, this operator is Hermitian, even though it depends on the combination plus minus because the Hermitian dagger of the first quantity would be the second quantity, and the Hermitian dagger of the second quantity would be the first quantity. So the addition of these two would give you the exact same operator back. Okay, and you can prove to yourself that this has to uh, be equal to one of the other operators, Sx or Sy, whatever it is. Sx probably. 
okay so you should be conversant with the dirac bracket notation and how to write down abstract operators using the dirac bracket notation we will also solve a tutorial problem tomorrow regarding this in particular you should be uh, comfortable with writing operators down in this abstract form so an abstract forms as uh, uh, ket times a bra okay this is something this is sometimes called the outer product of two matrices so you you are comfortable with row vector multiplying a column vector that is just a number but you should also get comfortable with a column vector multiplying a row vector that is called the outer product of two matrices and in the context of uh, quantum mechanics the way you construct this matrix is simply consider the components of this matrix and work out the components one by one simply the way we have done in this simple 2d linear vector space example okay we will stop here at this point and we will take this up uh, further in tomorrow's tutorial where we will solve some problems and after that we will switch gears and we will talk about um, uh, function spaces because i want to go on to the concept of infinite dimensional linear vector space okay so are there any questions or comments that you have at this stage so the formal lecture will stop at this point.